Welcome to Money Talk with Tiff, a podcast where we discuss everything money from tips and tricks to current events. Follow me on my journey to become debt free and meet other cool people along the way. I am your host, Tiffany Grant. Now let's talk money. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Money Talk with Tiff. Today, I'm super excited because I have another guest episode. And today I have Joe Driscoll on. So Joe um, has been leading people from all walks of life, including military and civilian, toward achieving financial independence. Um, His business is called Average Joe's Financial Independence, and he is currently a money coach. He's married to his lovely wife, Michelle, for the past 16 years, and they have two kids, Benjamin and Molly. So welcome, Joe. Thank you for coming on. Thank you very much, Tiff, for finally having me. I know there were some uh, coordination issues, but I'm glad I finally got the chance to sit down and talk to you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I am so flexible with this podcasting thing. Um, Everything is just so laid back with everything that I do. So I just appreciate you coming on. Um, I know part of your story, so you're active duty military, and thank you for your service, by the way. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) So um, you're in the, you're currently in the Coast Guard, and you know, you've lived the life of living paycheck to paycheck. And while you and your wife are trying to pay off debt and everything, you still had to live the military life. So, you know, all of the moving around and things like that. So I just wanted to touch on that a little bit, you know, just in case I have some active duty military listening, you know, what are some strategies that you use when trying to pay that down? Yeah. So Tiff, I believe, um, I believe the key principle, everything starts with, you know, putting your money on, putting your, putting everything in a budget. Obviously, if you don't know where your money's going, you'll, you'll see kind of where it went uh, analogy. And th- I think that's the first principle. A lot of my clients, they just have no idea where their money's going. So in that same circumstance was true for us. We just, when we first realized that we were in debt up to our, our eyeballs, we were like, where's our actually money going? And that's when we finally sat down as a couple and we said, okay, well, this is what we're paying here. This is what we're paying there. And then we finally sat down and we're like, oh, and we tallied up all the numbers. This was our second time around trying to tackle this. We had about $52,000 in debt. Um, mm-hmm. So that's where you kind of have to start. I believe that's a good starting part for everybody because I believe the seeing is believing concept. Put it on paper. Let your eyes see it for the first time. And it's a real reality check for most people. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I always preach about budgeting, whatever you want to call it, just make sure you know your inflows and outflows, because that's the only way to make progress in anything. Um, You know, a lot of people try to do like the mental accounting, and that does not work. (laughs) It has to be in black and white or in Excel or however you want to get it down. So yeah, I definitely appreciate that. Now, I know we had a brief discussion before the podcast started and while you were trying to clean up your debt, you had three transfers. So you had to move, you and your family had to move three different times, you know, during this process. So did that play a role in how fast you paid it off? Yeah, it did. I mean, it, our income changes slightly with the military. We have a thing called BAH, which is their basic allowance for housing. That's your only thing that really changes based on your living area. So when we started our journey, we were down in Jacksonville, Florida. And then during the middle of the journey, we got transferred to Chesapeake, Virginia area. And then as we were in the final, final stages, we got transferred out to San Diego, California. So, um, but that the final stages for San Diego, we're already cleaned up in debt. We were just trying to build a true emergency fund at that point. Um, so I say three moves, but a technically I look at it the way is like, okay, we finally had a fully emergent, fully funded emergency fund at that point. So I consider it three moves in my eyes. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I know you were on the um, Amazon eBay buzz before it became super popular and oversaturated. <laughs> so if you can just like take us through that, like what made you start, you know, a Amazon seller account and eBay seller, like what sparked that yeah so we started our journey in jacksonville florida like i said 
was during that tour when I said, okay, what are we going to do for side income? Because you have to have side income, I believe, to actually get that revenue generated, to get that, that debt snowball, that fire in you, that passion in you to get it going. So um, I was always doing different side hustles. I believe I'm a true side hustler, and we, we can definitely get into that if you'd like, because I have, definitely, I have numerous side hustles that I still do to this day. Um, but one of the things that kind of sparked me, we kind of followed all these coupon savvy people and this one and that one and um we really got into the whole ebay store and we actually became power sellers in florida while we were doing this so our garage had probably about 50 different laundry baskets because that was the way we were keeping inventory sliding in and out like laundry baskets full of uh at the time we were trying to flip uh children's books and numerous other things, whatever we could get our hands on that had a good profit margin. And like I said, this was before like all the stuff we you see with FBA and Amazon and all that. Now, uh, it wasn't really talked about too much. And I just was like, oh, man, this is the direction we had. Uh, we kind of lost grasp of it when we transferred to Virginia. It was just too much to keep up with during the transfer. But that was what really cleaned up a lot of our debt. Um, we were, to make, we were able to make some huge profit margins doing that. And considering my wife was a stay-at-home mom at the time, she was able to ship packages during the day while I was at work. So nice. we did a lot of our work at night in the evenings, and then she would ship packages out during the day. Well, I am firmly a believer in side hustling. <laughs> so what, <laughs> other, what other side hustles have you taken on over the years to pay off debt? So I'm still active duty. So I do my financial coaching business where I lead others to financial success. Um, I also, we still run our eBay and Amazon. Um, we also do anytime I can find different deals, we'll, we'll try to flip them on offer up or something like that. And I also work for, which is unique. Um, I was on a podcast a couple of weeks ago and he kind of called me out for this unique situation. I work for a locksmith here in San Diego on the side, helping him like refurbish safes. And I was a, a GSA, a government, a government safe uh, inspector at one time. So he brought me in to help him as a side. So as another one of my side hustles is helping a local locksmith here in the area. Nice, nice. So I'm not going to name all of my side hustles because I have so many. <laughs> um, but just to name a few to give some people some ideas. So I do ride sharing. So I do Uber and Lyft. Um, I make soap. That's another one of my businesses. So I sell bars Ooh. of soap. Um, I have a campaign on my car right now through Carvertize. Uh, so if anybody's interested, definitely apply. They're legit. And I get paid about $100 a month just to have a logo on my car or a promotion thing on my car while I'm driving around regularly, um, <laughs> which I think is pretty awesome. Um, and let's see. <sighs> There's a few more. Of course, I do the blog and podcast, and then I freelance write sometimes. Um, I do speaking. So there's just a lot of things that I do. Um, but I do believe, like, I was doing ride sharing before Money Talk with Tiff was even a thing. And I feel like that made a big dent in my debt. Like, that extra few thousand a year is amazing when it comes to paying off debt. So you're listening to two side hustlers right now, go out there and get you a side hustle <laughs> because it will definitely um, help out with the debt, speed that up. So with that being if said, there was two, oh, go ahead. There was two other things that I forgot to mention. One is kind okay. of unique too. So, so my wife and I also run her own Etsy store, but it, the unique mm -hmm. thing that I do is I get subcontracted out. It's 1099 work for a, uh, a company where I go in and do financial presentations for like HR, like part of their HR program. So um, depending on the area, they, they contract you out and you can go in there and you do your, your little PowerPoint presentation, you go out, which is a pretty good gig as well. Oh yeah. And I forgot to mention that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> see life of side hustlers is so many that you forget right. 
Um, but yeah, I uh, go into corporations and do presentations as well because my background's in HR. So I try to mesh like HR and finance together um, because I love both. So <laughs> it's pretty cool. But um, with that being said, I mean, I completely admire you all with the whole Amazon and eBay store. Um, I know I tell people all the time when they're trying to become debt free, I'm like, look around your house. Like there's probably so many things that you can get rid of. And like currently, I know I usually post things on Facebook marketplace and offer up and let go. Um, I sell to declutter, like if it's electronic stuff. So there's plenty of ways to get money. Um, just by doing minimal effort, <laughs> minimal effort things. There, there was another unique one, Tiff, that I remember when you were talking about that. Um, play it against sports, mm. kind of unique. Um, but when we were going through it, a lot of people used to get rid of used bikes, but play it against sports would actually give you cash for bikes. I'm not sure if they still do that. Um, but essentially, I would go around picking up used bikes and turn around and sell it right to play it against sports, which was pretty unique. You know, it only bring in like 10, 15 bucks a bike, but it was still free cash. Oh, that is an awesome idea. <laughs> I did not know that. So I will be going yeah. around looking for, <laughs> looking for <laughs> bikes. <laughs> I, I, this was years ago. I'm not sure if they still do it, but it makes sense if they would. <laughs> that is genius. Um, I know, uh, just funny thing, my grandma, she goes around on like garbage day and looks for like furniture and things like that. And, you know, their house is packed with stuff. But I'm like, man, if I can just go around, pick up a free item, like a bike or something that's easy to transport, take it right down the street. <laughs> That would be awesome. That's good stuff. All right. So, All right, Tiff. So you opened up a can of worms there. Okay. And I, I usually don't get into it, but we might as well because we're being straightforward. So one of the things that really, really helped us out was me going around on garbage days. And when this was going on, this was kind of the foreclosure. So in Florida, mm. a lot of people were putting their stuff at the curb and I was doing my normal run. And I'm like, this is not what I was just going around like the really upscare area. Mm -hmm. And it was the night I remember texting my wife. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I just hit the mother load. Somebody got a divorce and the guy threw all the ladies stuff, all this workout gear and all these shoes out. My truck that I drive a 2003 Chevy pickup truck, obviously paid off years ago, but it was overflowing with so much workout gear and stuff like that. When my wife and I finally laid everything out in the garage, we had 55 pairs of like different running shoes and stuff like that. We turned around on eBay and flipped them. <laughs> that was an extreme money maker. I think mm -hmm. we wound up having a revenue of like $3,000 liquid cash on that whole flip. But that was a crazy one-off scenario. So I had to open up that can since you said your grandma does it. That is a untapped market. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you know what? There's so many things that people just put out on the street because they don't want it anymore that yeah. it's in perfectly good condition. <laughs> like yes. any, anytime I need a piece of furniture or something, I got to shop at my grandma's house first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, do you have a nightstand? Do you have a bookshelf? <laughs> you know, that's that's just my thing. And nine times out of ten, she has it. And it, it has saved me a lot of money in furniture. <laughs> Um, so with that being said, um, I am a firm believer in secondhand. I thrift a lot. I assume that you and your wife are the same. Oh, absolutely. We still have our dilapidated couch that's made so many moves. Every time the couch gets moved to another duty station, the moving guys are like, you maybe want to get a new couch. They have to like twist these legs on the bottom of the couch with visqueen and stuff to get them to stay. And we're like, we're good. We're good. We'll make it last. <laughs> I love it. So. I love it. I'm the exact same way. <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much, Joe. This was awesome. And I know we gave people so many things to talk about, especially when it comes to side hustling. So if people want to learn more about you, where can they find you? So obviously, I have numerous things going on. But the easiest way to find me is if you just simply Google Average Joe's Financial Independence, it'll come up. It's my temporary site right now. Or people can contact me directly at area code 805-419-9777. Again, area code 
805-419-9777 or simply Google Average Joe's Financial Independence and it'll pop right up. Nice. And I will have um, that link in the show notes for everybody listening. Thank you so much again, Joe. This was awesome. Definitely use Joe as a resource if you are active duty military. He knows his stuff. <laughs> if you're struggling, because I know it's I know it's so easy, you know, in the military. Actually, I just had an episode not too long ago where I talked to somebody that was um, previously in the military and she was saying it's so easy to overspend because most things are taken care of. So like your housing, all of that, all of that stuff is taken care of. So it's easy to get into that trap. So if you are active duty military, hit Joe up (laughs) so he can help you get right. So thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. You too, Tiff. Thank, Thank you a lot. Thank you for listening to the Money Talk with Tiff podcast. For free resources and materials, head over to moneytalkwitht.com. And while you're there, why not sign up for our newsletter so you'll never miss an episode. Talk to you soon.